friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today's got kind of an old-fashioned vlog. I'm on the road. I got to drive. I got like a 20-something mile drive. I got to go down and look at these cabinets for a customer. And I thought that I'd talk a little bit about an interesting subject, and that subject is the internet. The uh, highs and lows, almost like the ocean, the open sea. You know, the the, the fun and the pitfalls of the internet, from social media to, uh, you know, YouTube. I mean, it's an interesting thing. I got on, you know, YouTube back in, I think it was September of 2012. Little tiny channel. It took me forever to get to 20 subscribers. It might have been years before I even hit 100. I, it might have been a couple years. I mean, I had little, very little exposure. What's interesting is that I had a nice interview with Mark Bustler of Classic Game Room. And I was on YouTube just so I could comment and, you know, like the videos, but I didn't have my own channel. It's a shame because I could have had overnight probably a thousand subs from the shout-out. I had like 65 emails from people uh, and private messages from that exchange with Mark Bustler, a three-part series or interview. I, I've got it down on my channel. Um, I don't know if Mark kept that stuff back up there or not, but I, I made my own compilation of all three episodes and put it in there. It was a really fun exchange. Mark was one of those few channels that I got kind of starstruck with early on and wanted to donate like a madman. Everything, and he opened that started this uh, classic or CGR garage, and he was wanting to interview like, you know, die cast car collectibles and stuff like that, and Hot Wheels and little muscle machines. And man, I go, dude, I got like 35. So I donated 35 of them. He reviewed about half of those. <coughs> I donated a really cool little um, Hot Wheel of like uh, the, the Mach 5 from Speed Racer. He never reviewed that one. He did review most of the expensive collectibles and Budweiser, NASCAR, and I gave him like a 007, you know, James Bond DB5 car and stuff like that. I gotta get off here before I forget. I get sidetracked doing these ones. I forget to pay attention to where I'm going. Um, a fun thing, and I, and I enjoyed uh, enjoy donating things to Classic Game Room, and then he'd do a little shout out, and you'd hear your name called out, and it was almost like being on TV initially, it was such a strange dynamic, but my god, if I had had a YouTube channel at the time, which I never even thought of, I didn't do it for that reason, Mark wanted to do it, I actually was going to fly to Pittsburgh to see him and donate this uh, El Camino painting in person, I was going to take it on the plane with me and donate it, maybe get a, a nice picture of Mark and I, maybe go out and have a nice lunch with him or something. And I sent him an, an email talking about it. Well, dude, I, I appreciate that. It's a nice idea. It's thoughtful, but I'm pretty busy. I don't know if that would fit with my schedule. And I, I could read between the lines. I said, it's cool, dude. It's all right. But he, he kind of felt bad. He goes, look, what if I, I did like a Skype interview with you? I said, yeah, that'd be great. And we did. If God, if I had had... Let me turn my heat down here. It's always... This truck takes, it's a big truck, takes a while to heat up, but God, when it does, it's, it's like being in hell here, like in a furnace. But, you know, basically, uh, everything worked out great. I had a nice interview with him. He wanted to interview me uh, as a way to kind of make up for that, and I appreciated that. It was so nice. I mean, I, I frankly never sold one of my paintings because of it, which is fine. I didn't do it for that reason, that's not why I did it, it just so happens I had a website and he linked it off his deal and everything, but but it was just nice to have the exchange, that, that was the fun of it for me was to actually visit with Mark Bustler, it was almost like being in person, you know, visit with him on Skype, and he's someone that has uh, stayed in touch with me for years, sometimes it's once a year, sometimes it's every other month, when I was in the hospital with my back surgery, uh, he reached out to me with a nice email, he said, but one of your, you know, our mutual friends, sent me something, said that you were quite ill in the hospital or whatever, and I wanted to kind of touch base, see if you're okay. And that really meant a lot to me. It, uh, it, it's a little gestures like that that go a long ways, and, and frankly, that's why I'm in YouTube. That's why I'm on social media. It's only for the friendship. I've never monetized. I've never cared to monetize. I just like to share my viewpoint and, and to have that in interaction. And out of that interaction, you sift through all of that, you'll eventually pick up a couple good mates or good friends or good people. Some of them I've Skyped with, like, you know, Dave at Lawn Boys Post 1975. And I feel bad. He's wanted to Skype with me for months now, and, I, and the timing never works out. So, Dave, if you happen to see this, 
uh, I apologize, but I, I'm not blowing you off. I'm just getting real busy with you know, responsibilities in life, and it's not easy. By the time you come home from work, I'm kind of leaving for work quite often. And I've seen your Sky. Yeah, I see you. He'll, he'll PM me and, dude, can you talk right now? I'm like, dude, I'm going out the door, but maybe this weekend we can do it. And of course, the weekend comes and it never happens. So, but it's nice. I I, I live for that interaction because we live in a world where it's hard to have good friends. Like the old days, you know, you'd work with a guy at work, you kind of hit it off with him, you go off after work and have a beer with him, you know, at a pizza and beer joint or something, and it's fun. Sometimes you'd, you'd hit it off, and other times you'd see they're kind of an asshole, you know, when you see them in a different light aside from work, and you might go out with them once or twice, and that's kind of the end of it, you know. Or you'll meet people at a Christmas party at work, and you hit it off. I've met some of my best friends I met one of them through uh, my ex-wife's Christmas party. And that's how I met my present wife, ironically. It's so weird. If I had not had gone to that Christmas party with my ex-wife, I was bored out of my mind. I heard this guy with a Maine accent. I said, hey, dude, you sound like you're from Maine. I'm from Maine. We hit it off. We became best friends down in Orange County. Really good friends. I, I don't know if he moved back east or not. I've lost touch with him. I, it's been years since I've talked with him. But for quite a while, we were going out, hitting bars, going out having a great time. Um, his wife worked with my ex-wife. And then, ironically, through him and his brother, I met my present wife. It's a long, sordid story, but but it's a good one. That's for another vlog in and of itself, the more personal nature. But uh, my point is, it's nice when you can meet people, but my God, since I moved up to Sacramento in 2008, which I've come to think of, it's been exactly 10 years this month. March of 08 is when I moved. I think it was late February, but around March of 2008 is when I moved to Sacramento. It's a beautiful area. <clears throat> I love it, but I, I gave up my family and friends. I lost so much. I ha I'm one of those old school people that likes to pick up the telephone and talk to people. Uh, and, hey, dude, what are you doing? You mind if I come over this weekend? We'll work on the cars or whatever. And it's a beautiful thing. But <clears throat> since I've moved up here, I, I really haven't met that many people. I've met a couple of painters. Uh, some of them are kind of trollish, and <clears throat> I've never really hit it off with them too much. I mean, I'll see guys with a paint story. Hey, man, how's it going? How's your, how's your business doing? I saw you did this house, blah, 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 the other day. You know, you have a little small talk, but it never amounts to March. I mean, they're not people I would really want to hang out with, you know, on the weekends, but I respect them as fellow painters or, you know, uh, contractors, whatever. But because of this, what I'm getting in a roundabout way is that the internet has kind of replaced um, real interaction with people. So. I cherish the, the, the comments. I, I take the time when people on my YouTube, uh, you know, will leave a, a comment, people I don't even know, I always take the time and I don't just say, you know, oh, thanks for watching and then that's it. I really try to say something personal to each person as I try to read between the lines and see from their perspective what it is about the video they might have liked or watched or whatever. Let me set my cruise control here before I get a ticket. Um, and it's usually a good thing. <clears throat> Quite often you'll get a, sometimes you'll get a comment back and you might have a thread of three or four comments within that one thing. And I enjoy that. It's like, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hint or a taste of what real human interaction used to be in the real world, you know, back in the day. <clears throat> and I cherish it. I've had people have watched my channel for years and just one of them recently has been watching <clears throat> me for, God, five years now, I think, four or five years. He sent me a little sweet tooth doll. I, I'm not into those little pops, figures, things with those kind of little black eyes or whatever, but he sent one of the sweet tooth thing and I absolutely loved it. I was so thrilled. It was like someone gave me a $500 gift. I mean, it was so special to me because that series means so much to me. This is someone I've known for years. He's never sent anything before, but he wanted to, he, one day he goes, Dean, I got something for you. Would you mind if, if I had your address? I'll say, oh, sure, go ahead. I, I'd like that. And I value those kind of people. Uh, you always feel funny accepting gifts because you don't really know the people. And sometimes uh, you don't know their motive for sending the gift. I had someone recently that, you know, reached out to me. I, I don't know them at all. I, I interacted with them, you know, on Twitter or something a couple times. They really don't watch my videos, but 
claim that they watch them and, and you know like my content. <clears throat> hey, dude, how's it going? How would you I'd like to do a podcast with you? <clears throat> I said, hey, that's great. I'm always open to any kind of a, a collaborative deal. You know, I've had you know Ang- uh, Carrick and Angry Center Gaming invited me not once but twice on his podcast. It was really appreciated. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> I've been on. I think Solid Red Rev had one podcast that I, I was on that Blaze was kind of orchestrating and it was great. I really enjoyed the interaction. Some people will let you talk. Some people will kind of talk over you and cut you off constantly, which that's the aspect of podcasts I'm not really a big fan of. I, I get really irritated with people constantly cut you off with their own point. It's like what you're saying is of no value. It's more important that they get their point across. And it, it, that's the downside of podcasts that I don't frankly like. But if you're on a really good one like Carrots and Angry Centaur Gaming, everyone is a, a professional and respects each other. And, and that's a good thing. So, And I enjoy that. I'm not on too many of them. Uh, I've been on some in the UK. In fact, they, one of them reached out to me and go, hey, we know you know Mark Bustler. Could you think you could get him to come on a podcast with me? So I, I did it. I like, well, I'll try. I can't promise anything. And Mark agreed. It was kind of fun. I was in the UK. Of course, you know, eight hours ahead. And Mark saw me drinking an IPA beer. Hey, I want one of those, you know. And, and it was just great. It was wonderful to have this exchange between guys in the UK that, you know, love classic game room. And, of course, I love it, too turn this heat down a little bit more <clears throat> and it's a great thing I <clears throat> enjoyed it it was one of those wonderful things so <clears throat> and because of that podcast I met a lot of UK youtubers that I'm friends with today some of them I'm still friends with some of them <clears throat> kind of fallen by the wayside I mean <clears throat> shit happens people get busy with their life and things happen the internet is <clears throat> is an interesting place but you know I had someone that reached out to me recently claims he likes my content but yet never comments <clears throat> wanted to give me a very expensive gift, which I was appreciative of, but I'm, you know, naturally a little suspect initially, but I said, you know, maybe the guy, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He could be like me with Mark. I want to give Mark a lot of expensive things right off the bat, and Mark certainly appreciated it, and it, you know, turned into a positive thing, so because of that, I don't want to discount, and I know I just gave, like, solid rev. I helped him out with a Xbox 360. He wanted a new one, the one that had that a bunch of, um, I guess, degenerates hadn't had their, you know, hand meat hooks on. So it, it felt, and it feels nice to give something to help someone out. It's a beautiful thing. That's what giving is all about. So I never want to discount that. And I told Reb wanted to pay me. I said, dude, I enjoy the gift. Let me enjoy the gift of giving, you know. And so because of that, I'm not so quick to, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about it. But if someone wants to give you something, that's fine. But right off the bat it's like they feel that gives you the, uh, that they have the right now access to you so you wanted my home phone no oh, sure I'll give you my home phone yeah we can talk on the phone I love to talk on the phone but then you talk on the phone with them and they constantly cut you off they have their own agenda you can kind of see it after a couple of conversations with them you're talking about something you know and, and you think it's a mutual interaction and they're yeah, yeah yeah right and they just bulldoze over your statement with what they what they want to get down to business with and talk to about you know an upcoming podcast or whatever and that's fine I said well he's just passionate about you know what he wants to do he's excitable you know and I, I'm certainly that way myself so I try to see it in the, in the light and the perspective of human nature I've been on the planet 50 odd years so I'm not a psychiatrist I, I don't know how to read people when they're psychotics or you know nutty or whatever but I've been a a pretty good judge of human nature for the most part I try to give everyone a chance in fact I give them I always say this I give people three chances so you know things happen Um, people have high expectations for something you know and I told them a lot dude I'm busy right now but I'll do the best I can you know I try to call people right back and have that exchange with them and interaction with them. Um, And then if you don't meet their um, uh, expectations or whatever, you can tell that they get a little irritated. So, and then that may come out in, you know, social media, on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. So, you know, you run the risk of, when you accept someone's, you know, act of kindness, a gift or, or anything, or open carefully, I'm very, careful about giving my personal information, my address, and my personal phone number out to people, 
but sometimes you, you take a chance, you know, you just take a chance and, and my God, it can turn into a nightmare and you can quickly realize that you're dealing with a psychotic or someone that's unstable, that they're emotionally not, I guess, developed or not emotionally mature and it can get really nasty really fast and I had kind of an exchange like that recently and had to cut ties with someone and again after it's happened a few times verbally on the telephone then you know via uh, you know PMs and messages and then someone will talk down to you publicly on a public forum even if it's in a subtle way it's a combination of these things where you read between the lines and you quickly see that you know what I'm not interested so I contacted this person you know and sent him a, a message through a text and I said dude you better cancel that gift I, I, I don't want it I don't want to be responsible for taking it I'd rather have you cancel it I certainly don't want to spend the big money and shipping it back if it's something that's heavy or expensive and uh, you know people can get completely irate and bent out of shape and because now they're let down now their private agenda whatever that was isn't met and they're mad as hell and they're going to tell the world world about it that's a downside of youtube so you get a, a it becomes a freak show at that point and i'm not in, I, I don't believe in drama I, I don't like talking about people by name i i don't want to call people out i've never liked doing that i've never liked other channels that build their channel and, and doing that and that kind of drama it's not something i'm interested in at all but you got to see the ups and downs of YouTube's and, and, and there, there are ups and downs with it it's a beautiful thing but it's almost like swimming in the ocean you can go out every day have a beautiful swim and I lived by the beach for years and then all of a sudden one day go out and get stung by a massive jellyfish which happened to me or worse yet get bit by a giant fucking shark you know I'm getting chopped out and you can take that tranquility of the ocean for granted because you've had such a good experience 20 days in a row uh, it's, you, you tend to go out with no fear, but all of a sudden you'll bump into a, a, a predator out there. <clears throat> you think it's a porpoise and it's a shark or something else and it gets nasty. So <clears throat> these are just things that <clears throat> you realize with the internet. I've had other relationships, getting onto other topics about it, <clears throat> where <clears throat> I've had inter interactions with people you know, on Twitter and Facebook. <clears throat> And it can be over a little thing, over because I'm I'm very opinionated, and it's because I've lived so long. I wasn't always this way, but after 40 years old, you get to a point where you start to kind of see what you know, what you like, and you start to learn what you don't like. And you don't need a lot of time to think about it. Some people are always kind of indecisive; they never can make their mind up with anything. I know precisely what I like, and I know precisely what I don't like, and so I don't need to vacillate endlessly on something. I. I'm, I'll do the research, I'm a measure twice and cut once kind of person. And for me, I've learned that that saved me a lot of grief. That's just one of those little things you kind of learn over the years with wisdom. And so, you know, like my view of Star Wars, I've told a lot of people, oh my God, I mean, I, you think the gaming community stuff, God forbid you say anything against, you know, just Star Wars geeks and fanatics, people just lose their fucking minds over it. And I got attacked at, uh, um, many times over my view that I won't refuse to watch any post George Lucas Star Wars things. And I actually lost a couple uh, friends. Uh, I don't know if they're good friends. I have to question whether they really were good friends at the end of the day. If uh, they're going to write you off, you know, or not be friends with you or you, uh, unfriend you on Facebook because you dared to have an opinion on The Force Awakens. I, I just tell people, look, I just, you know, I try to explain it so they understand. I, that's one thing I, I do with my YouTube show, is I always try to preface my point of view by saying, look, this is how, this is how I feel. I'm gonna, I gotta hear a little early, I'm gonna pull over in this parking lot, continue my little rant here. It's right down the street here, so I'm not too far away. Oh, goodness. So, right here. Here we go. Set my camera up here. There we go. Put my window down just a crack. <clears throat> so I always try to preface my opinion on on um <clears throat> thirsty. 
on YouTube, if I'm about to talk about something that I know is going to get people riled up, I say, look, look, this is just me as an older gamer. I'll mention the thing about the not wanting to play the female protagonist, but which I don't have a problem with with like games like <clears throat> Tomb Raider, which I've my wife and I for years have enjoyed <clears throat> and have played together. So that's kind of something we like to do together. Today she won't play it with me, but she loves to watch me play it. So I'm still have the, I have the Rise of the Tomb Raider installed permanently in my digital hard drive, which is by the way was a gift of someone <clears throat> uh, a year ago when I was going through really tough times after the back surgery. That year, I had bought like two new games all year. It was really broke. Someone said, Dean, look, we, I heard you don't have much money. <clears throat> they had a killer deal on, you know, PlayStation Store. <clears throat> I love your show. I'd like to help you out. Here's a code for, you know, 60 bucks. Why don't you get yourself a game on, you know. And, man, I really appreciated that. I still haven't played the game yet, but it meant so much to me that someone <clears throat> liked me enough to want to <clears throat> donate a game like that to me. Whether it was a physical game or digital, doesn't matter. It's the act of kindness that counts, and that, to me, <clears throat> I like. <clears throat> I don't want to reject gifts because occasionally you get a nutcase, and, you know, that's it, I'm not taking gifts from people anymore, <clears throat> you know, or whatever. And I've, I've never taken financial donations, and I've had people that have asked me, Dean, <clears throat> you know, it looks like you're going through hard times. If you need any help or money, let me know. I always thank, I said, no, it's very, very kind of you, very thoughtful, thank you, but no, but, but no thanks. I, I, I'll make do, I'm doing okay, but thanks anyway. Someone wants to give a gift, or they've got, uh, my friend Mikey sent me to these Snake Plissken comic books one day, <clears throat> out of left field, and I was delighted. I never, didn't even know they existed, and I really cherish those to this day. I think I'm only missing one in this series of four, I gotta get the other one, which is <clears throat> kind of pricey, but it meant a lot to me. <clears throat> so I don't want to, like, that's it, no more gifts from these bastards, you know. <clears throat> I don't want to do that. I don't want to not interact with people because of a couple bad eggs. And it happens. You'll get people that are just whacked out. You quickly see it for what it is. I don't dignify them <clears throat> by arguing with them. I just move on. And I don't do it publicly. I just quietly remove myself <clears throat> from their environment. Yes, it means blocking them especially if they're psychotic, I, I will immediately block them because I can quickly see what's coming. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. <clears throat> and um, in time, they have tells that you can read, and, and you know, which is unfortunate. But <clears throat> So, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I try to preface because <clears throat> I, I don't want to get people wound up. <clears throat> I know the gaming community <laughs> in particular is very <clears throat> opinionated with what they like. And usually it's a fanboy thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is really hoarse this morning. <clears throat> With Xbox versus... I had someone in the comments. God, it was on... I don't know what... One of my latest vlogs or something. Who <clears throat> singled out something that I said. I missed the my concept of my vlog completely. And all he was like triggered because I, <clears throat> I didn't uh, mention the exclusives on the Xbox One. And I'm like, this has nothing to do with exclusives for the Sony or the... Microsoft. I mean, and this is not what this is. All. Yeah, but you should have mentioned this. And, uh, so I'm like, I, you know, I try to see where people come. From. So I'll, I'll, I'll interact with them. Maybe he just didn't understand where I'm coming from. So I clarify my position, and I, and I will take the time. I may not like their comment, but I'll take the time to at least try to get them to understand me because I don't want to be misunderstood, and I certainly don't want to quickly dismiss their opinion either. So I, I don't mind having a spirited debate or having an exchange and interaction on a topic. <clears throat> but I, once people get nasty, I had someone that, there was one comment in my last big vlog I had to do, I had to remove it and you know, block the guy. And this guy had a huge channel because he got triggered over the female protagonist thing. Maybe he's never seen me talk about it in other videos, but he came at me with a hard on and I, I immediately <clears throat> had to block him and I feel bad but you know I'm not gonna dignify comments like that look you're gonna make a personal attack and come after me publicly on my own thing <clears throat> no you're, you're gonna get blocked <clears throat> life is too short and so is your attitudes I'm not gonna put up with that <clears throat> I'm all about respect and and the people that know me <clears throat> that really know me have known me for years know that that's a big thing for me is respect if you're respectful to me I'm very respectful you know, with you. If you have a problem with my <clears throat> point of view, let's talk about it. But let's talk about it civilly. Don't, please don't attack me. <clears throat> please don't say nasty things that are hurtful. Don't try to classify, because once you label someone that you're, you're one of these types, you're, I bet you're one of those Trump supporters. I mean, I get a lot of this crap, especially with political things. 
and they attack you personally and they try to label you. Once you label someone, you negate them. You negate them as a human being. You negate their personality <clears throat> and who they are and what they have to say. <clears throat> and I don't want to do that with others and I certainly don't want to when it's done to me. So, <clears throat> again, in my videos, I'll I'll preface it. I'll say, now, I know this isn't a popular opinion and I don't want to, you know, get into a debate about it, but I, I, this is how I feel about, you know, this game coming out or or about this business practice with game companies today or whatever. Some people get it and some don't. Some people will hyper-focus on the one thing. It's like they're watching you to see if you step out of line. I don't like that! And they immediately pull out a Spaz 12-gauge automatic shotgun and put it right to your temple and proceed to hit the auto auto uh, you know fire on you point blank. <clears throat> and I don't like that. I, I don't like to be misjudged. It's like, please try to consider the context. I had a, a unfortunate misunderstanding with someone who we actually became friends with. I realized, in retrospect, I saw him on another podcast thing, and I said, what happened? God, we were the best of friends. We were going to do some collabs together a couple years ago. What the hell happened? I'm trying to remember back, and then I remember what it was, and, and I realized that <clears throat> that I was, we both had got in a kind of a heated argument about something, and that's fine. I felt that he got a little nasty. And I, I let him have it with both barrels and unfriended him, and I felt bad about that. And I approached him recently, right off the bat, I mean, he was very suspicious. This is the kind of guy, he's a great guy, and I think the world will have the utmost respect for him, but he's someone that would uh, demand the, uh, the uh, what's the word, right? would, that would demand a bacteria count on the milk of human kindness. You know, he's someone who's very suspicious. What do you want, Dean? You know, he's kind of, kind of well, look, dude, I, I feel bad. <clears throat> I wanted to apologize. <clears throat> I, I didn't like the way that went down. I, I really, you were a good friend. We both were good friends for quite a while. And whether we continue to be friends or not, this is how I feel. I just, I want to say, oh, that seems like a backhanded, you know, uh, apology to me. And I do, well, please, it, it's anything but that. Please let me explain. And I just took the time. I didn't have to, but I tried to, because I wanted him to understand where I was coming from. I tried to explain myself. He's like, well, Jesus, Dean, why didn't you, you should have told us that or let your friends know so they understand the context of your beef or your complaint. And he's right. And in the future, I'm definitely going to take take that to heart and do that more often. Uh, <clears throat> I'm an artist. I'm a right brain person. So I tend to be on the sensitive side of issues and the way I view things. I have a, a, a hardcore side of me that will take no prisoners, and then I've got another side of me that's very sensitive and kind and generous, and I try to focus on that. I have my ups and down days. I've mentioned I did a you know lengthy hour-long vlog on depression and hard times. You can you know search for it in my videos. I'm going to try to make a new video playlist of some of my better vlogs, and I'll definitely have that one in there. <clears throat> I urge you to watch it. It's 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 on hard times, anxiety, and depression. I don't know if that's a perfect syntax of how I said it, but <clears throat> and I talk about the challenges I go through as a manic depressive. It's not easy. And I really struggle. There's, I have some very dark days. <clears throat> Since I've gone through a barrage of health problems the last three years, uh, <clears throat> it has changed my outlook on life. It has changed a lot of my happy, upbeat demeanor. And I have to work even harder at staying up and staying positive now. So please try to understand that. <clears throat> and I'm only saying that because I'm trying to put my um, <clears throat> myself in context. I've had other friends that <clears throat> um, people on you know YouTube that have approached me and initially I always feel flattered. Anyone like, hey I love your content, blah blah blah. <clears throat> and I try to if I see they have a growing YouTube channel, I always subscribe. Sometimes I'm I'm embarrassed. I'll, like a year later I'll just happen to check to see I'll kind of click on their avatar. Oh shit, they got a channel with four hundred subs. Shit, I should subscribe to them and show support. Doesn't mean I can watch every video, but I try to support them and I'll watch a couple videos and you know hit a like or whatever. <clears throat> Some people though <clears throat> will expect something back. They, they you know and I'm and I'll shout them out. I'll do actually more than one shout out to support their channel. And initially they really like you and you like them and they watch all your things and comment you watch yours and over time they stop watching your comment. Now their channel is up and growing. You see a lot of your viewers that are watching them now and you watch your videos and you'll see god he's got like 20 of my viewers that obviously came from my channel <clears throat> that like his things and are commenting on him 
and that's fine. That's good. That's why I did the shout out because I'm trying to get their channels to grow. <clears throat> but then when you cease to hear from them or that you don't interact or you'll comment nicely, positively on their stuff on Twitter or Facebook, they don't even respond or give you the time of day. <clears throat> now they're in a different place. Now they're, they look down at you or your channel or so it could be perceived. Uh, <clears throat> I can get my feelings hurt just like anybody else. Sometimes I'll just, you know, remove myself from those pe people <clears throat> in general uh, because I don't want it, it, to... It, it's hurtful to see them that well, I thought we were friends and apparently, you know, we're not now. And you just feel like you were being used, that, you know, these people were phony. They used you to get what they wanted out of you and then they moved past you. And it's hard to know. It's hard to know the human heart. It's hard to know people's intentions, good or bad. I try to give people a benefit of the doubt. I try to, even if I have, and that's, I've had a couple people like that where I've had some kind of, <clears throat> some touch and go exchanges with them. <clears throat> but because there's a history there, I try to give them at least the three chances, sometimes six chances. I'll give them more because I like them as a person. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, so in time, I, you know, I, I reach out, sometimes I'll reach it back out to those people again <clears throat> if I feel that I, uh, it viewed them unfairly, and which could be the case in, t in certain uh, certain circles. It's just hard to know. Again, the internet is just, you kind of go into it blind. You don't know who you're dealing with. I, I try to have a positive view <clears throat> of myself and the community, but my God, the, the, negative, the negativity and the trolling gets really bad. I, I, I don't like the hateful comments. I don't like the trolling. I certainly don't like to feel used by people. <clears throat> Nobody does. That's what this vlog is about. So hopefully you understand, guys. <clears throat> it's just something I feel I wanted to say and get off my chest because I care. <clears throat> and I, and I want to move forward in a positive capacity with people. I don't want to be viewed of in a negative light. Yes, I'm very opinionated, but try to see that there's reasons for that. And just try to understand those reasons. And I'm going to try to do the same with you and understand your perspective and strong points of view as well whether it's a fanboy console thing or whether it's over a favorite film or, you know, politics I try to stay out of. I have very strong views as a libertarian, but uh, I've had a lot of people have attacked me, you know, even on uh, Facebook recently because of politics. I had good friends that loved me on YouTube, and then they saw my politics, which I only really show on, on Facebook. I don't really put it out there on Twitter or definitely not on YouTube. And then they, they, they'll unsub to me instantly and unfriend me over it because I'll say something against socialism, God forbid, or whatever. But <clears throat> I just have my own viewpoints, just like you guys do. And just all I'm saying is just hear someone out. Don't be too quick to judge. Don't negate me as a human being. <clears throat> Give me the benefit of the doubt. And I certainly need to do the same of others. And that's what the community is about. If more of us kind of took the time to try to understand someone else's perspective and point of view, I think it would be a much better world, especially on the internet. So thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy your games, enjoy your game collections, and thank you for taking the time to listen to me as a person, as a vlogger, as someone <clears throat> that's very passionate about gaming, movies, cars, and art, and all that, because I am, and I'm in this just for the friendship and the interaction, nothing more. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I appreciate your heavy support. Thanks, guys.